Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, and today I'm going to talk about something that gives me true nostalgia when I think about it. And so, before I tell you what it is, for those of you who are really in the know, I'm going to give you a hint. You ready? You ready for this? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, select, start. What am I talking about? Did you guess it? If you said Contra, then you won the prize, which is to get to watch this video. But yes, for those of you who were children in the 80s, or maybe you weren't, but you know what I'm talking about, that is probably one of the most infamous codes for games ever. And um, the reason is because Back when we were kids, back in the 80s, um, Contra was one of the coolest games, one of the hottest games, and this code gave you uh, 100 lives, or maybe it was 99, it was something like that. But the thing is, Contra was a pretty hard game, especially if you were a four-year-old, maybe I was six, I don't know, somewhere around there. But, um, so you needed 100 lives, and um, the thing is, uh, one of the things that I remember is that once you learn that code and you can get a hundred lives, you're far more lenient about which way you take and if you die and because you can just come right back. And so um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there's a there's it's analogous to to life and to the way we approach new obstacles. And the way we the way we look at our failures, um, and I know I've talked about failures before and reference points, and I'm I'm going to bring it up again, but let's put it into this context. When you would play the game Contra, for those of you that did, um, because you had the extra lives, you could you could test out new new ways of doing things instead of you know using your last life on level four to dodge over here the big cannon while the little jumpy guy is coming at you right you could try it one way and if you died you could try it another way until you found I remember I think it was the first level boss one of the most memorable bosses in all video game history and you know it's like shooting these little spray things but there was this one spot that if you stood right there and you kept shooting as fast as you could on the thing, the, the spray guys wouldn't get you. And anyways, the point is you only learn that by approaching a problem multiple times and, and, and sometimes dying or in this case sometimes failing or falling or losing your footing. But the thing is, is that the only time that you really lose. The only time that you truly fail is if you give up. If you're halfway into the game and you still have 50 more lives and you die one time or two times at the same place and you say, that's it. F it. I don't want to play anymore. Done. Then you failed. Then you gave up and the game wasn't worth playing anyways. But for those of you who persevere and keep trying not just with the game, but with life and whatever project, goal, outcome, relationship that you're aiming for, you're, those are the people who succeed. And so, um, so for the example that I love to use when it comes to failure is Thomas Edison and his invention of the light bulb. Now, many of you guys have probably heard me talk about it before. Many of you guys have probably heard the story before. But guess what? I'm going to tell it again because repetition is great. Thomas Edison was interviewed once, and, and the journalist asked him, what was it like to fail 10,000 times before you found the right way to, to make a light bulb? And his reply was brilliant and also gives us a glimpse into the polymathic mindset and that is so he told the reporter he said hey no 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 I found 10,000 ways not to make the light bulb 
And there's a difference there. And that tiny nuance in the way he looked at the problem, in the way he received his failures, is completely different. Because, see, most people, when they fail, they look at it and they throw it, they cast it off into the fire, they throw it into the trash, they don't use it anymore. It's done. And a lot of times, they just give up and go. The polymath mindset, those people who succeed, those people who can see beyond a small setback, they take that and they put it over here as a reference point. And they build those reference points up around and around into this giant pyramid until they reach the level that they've been attempting to get to. And eventually, once you've built all those bricks up, all those reference points up, now you have that, that, that monolithic masterpiece that will stand the test of time. And let me tell you why. Look at it from the other angle. Look at how many people in so many different fields find success early on and sometimes um, like, a, like a child movie star or someone who is very good at sports when they're young and they, they get a lot of fame or popularity from it and then as the years go by they, just, they don't last the test of time because they didn't fail enough when they were younger. They didn't learn enough reference points to make it something that they could repeat. And that is why you should always embrace failure. Because like Thomas Edison said, he found 10,000 ways not to create the light bulb. He found 10,000 ways that he knew that he would never have to try again so that he could find the one way, the repeatable way, the only way, well, probably not the only way, but the only way at the time, to repeat it constantly over and over again. So, for example, when you look at um, like rap singers who are one-hit wonders, it's because they lucked out and they got that one song that resonated with everybody. But because they didn't have um, multiple failures before that, they don't know how to replicate it. And the same thing goes for the, a perfect example is people who win the lottery. Far too often we see these lotto winners become multimillionaires and within a few years they're dead broke again because they didn't go through the steps that a millionaire normally goes through to learn how to manage their money, how to make their money, how to spend their money. And because they, do, they didn't, they, they fall into all of the common pitfalls and traps. And, and before you know it, you know, it's all gone. They've wasted it all away, all those opportunities. And so my, my humble recommendation to those of you who have followed me this far is to think about what is it in your life that you can use the Contra cheat code for and give yourself some extra tries so that you can t go at it again and go at it stronger. Um, what is it that you feel so um, passionate about and something that you can something that you can um, give back, you know, what, where is it that you could look at in your life that maybe you've, you've wanted to do it, right? You wanted to be a writer or you wanted to be an actor or you wanted to be a musician and you gave up because, you know, you, you, you found obstacles and challenges right away, or maybe you failed the first few times. Um, Another, an, another really good example of this is like the Harvard graduate who comes out of this great college, tries for one or two jobs that they, you know, have had their mind on. And when those companies, you know, say, hey, we're not accepting candidates at this time or you don't fit um, quite into our culture or whatever it might be, they're devastated for one, they're devastated. And for two, they end up working at like McDonald's or Target. And it's like, how did that happen? Here's this highly educated person. And it has nothing to do with what they know. It has everything to do with their resolve. And everything to do with finding, with embracing failure, right? 
there, there, just like there are plenty of fish in the sea when it comes to relationships, there are plenty of fish in the sea when it comes to jobs. So if one job in the sector that you're looking at um, doesn't work out, look for others. Try to find, there's always some door in, right? Writers, musicians, and actors are perfect examples, and, and there are others too. They're perfect examples of how you can look at one famous writer and then another famous writer and neither one of them got to that job professionally by doing the same thing. You know, everybody has their own story. And the thing is, what you should want is to have your own story. And, and it's built upon all of the failures that you go through to own them, to have those reference points to look back and say, that didn't beat me. I got up from that. I'm stronger than that. And then finally, you'll get to that success, the thing that you want, the thing that you're aiming for. And then that will serve as another reference point as you go along further on your journey um, towards whatever goals and dreams and obstacles and challenges and relationships that you have. So um, I hope this has been helpful. And if you'd like to hear more information, please continue to watch the other YouTube channels. Give me a like and subscribe. All right. Take it easy.